Marian Barta loved the arts. She was a mother of two children and an educator to many more. She was a primary school teacher beloved by her students and employers alike. But in 1997, something changed. Marian Barta quit her job, sold her house, changed her name and left, it seems, to start fresh in Europe. Then she returned, didn't contact anyone in her family, made some really big cash withdrawals and just dropped off the face of the earth. That's The Australian's national crime correspondent, David Murray. The mystery of Marion Barter's disappearance has endured for more than 25 years. Dave has been covering crime for about that long and has had eyes on this case since 2019. This story has come a long way in the last four years. Back in 2019, I first spoke to Marion's daughter, Sally Layden. She had very, very little information apart from a gut feeling that something bad had happened to her mother. Since then, there has been a hit podcast called The Lady Vanishes, and that has brought on all of these supporters, these amateur sleuths who have done an incredible job in tracking down information. Quite amazing what they've been able to find out. Last year, the New South Wales State Coroner, Teresa O'Sullivan, joined the fray, picking up the precious few clues available in the case in hopes of unravelling what might have become of this missing Queensland mother. They were hard words to hear, but ones Marion Barter's family have been waiting decades for. For the first time since the Gold Coast teacher went missing, a court has been told she is deceased. The inquest has taken a turn nobody could have predicted. Where we are now is that from nothing, suddenly at the centre of these inquiries is a man named Rick Bloom. And he is a man who has been convicted and jailed for fraud in France. He was originally from Belgium. He's used 50 aliases that we know of so far. And he has admitted on oath at the inquest that he was having an affair with Marion Barter for four months before she went missing. There are a whole range of allegations against Rick Bloom and essentially a lot of these revolve around him being a romance scammer and targeting middle-aged women and being a very, very smooth operator who then leaves these women in the lurch and takes off with their money. The pivotal connection between Rick Bloom and Marion Barter was made by one of those amateur sleuths. One of these researchers, Joni Condos, she found in researching Trove, a database for old newspapers and so on, an old ad that had been placed by someone who had the same surname that Marion had changed her name to. And it was a man looking for a relationship with a view to marriage. From there, they were able to identify that man as being Rick Bloom. And the links have followed from that one discovery by Joni, the researcher. They have been able to confirm that Rick Bloom was in this relationship with Marion Barter immediately before she went missing. And as far as Rick Bloom or any of his many aliases is concerned, Marion's disappearance could just be the tip of the iceberg. A handful of women across the pond have alleged Bloom relieved them of their savings in frauds and scams dating back decades. It's a ruse that's attracted international attention, with a joint investigation by two Belgian newspapers revealing Blum's victims could be as plentiful as his identities. I actually spoke to Rick Blum last week. I called him up. I wasn't actually sure if he would answer the call and then if he would, whether he would talk to me. He picked up the phone. I told him who I was. And instead of hanging up, he stayed on the phone. He was a very, very smooth operator. He was very calm. He chuckled at some of my questions. He did answer them. He denied any special interest in poisons because this has actually also come up in another context where one of the widows in Belgium who says that she was defrauded by him says that she was afraid he was going to poison her but he remained very cool, calm and collected. He eventually said he had to go. His counsel had told him not to talk, but he says, again, he knows nothing about Marion's disappearance. Stay with us. After the break, why there's hope Marion Barter's case could still be solved. This is a story about a mother robbed of the opportunity to see her children and grandchildren grow up. 
It's the chronicle of an alleged con man capable of exploiting the basic human desire for companionship and love. But it's also a tale of two daughters whose lives might have been immeasurably changed by the crossing of their parents' paths. Over the last few days, I've also been talking to Rick Blum's daughter from his third marriage. When he was giving evidence, Rick Blum said that he had only ever met this daughter once when she was a baby and that he'd never spoken to her. But in our long discussions over the last few days, she has told me that she actually reconnected with Rick Blum, her biological father, when she was an adult. She said it just turned out to be horrible. This was a man, she said, that talked a lot about killing in various forms. She said that he told her a specific method of how to poison people so that you could kill them without leaving a trace. At the other end of the spectrum, Sally Layden, Marion Barter's daughter, is desperate for answers about what happened to her mum more than a quarter of a century ago. It's been a big journey to get to this point. We're still digging. Haven't given up yet. Sally has been an unstoppable force in the search for her mother. None of this would have happened without her. She has basically put her life, I think, on hold in many respects to get to the bottom of this. She has basically started with almost nothing back in 2019. She had maybe followers in the hundreds on the Marion Barter's missing Facebook page. That's past 20,000 people. This has a huge amount of public support behind this campaign to find out what happened to Marion Barter. As inquest, amateur sleuthing and true crime fandom converge, those answers don't feel as far away as they once did. But not before one last twist in this 25-year mystery. The state coroner was due to hand down her findings on November 30 last year. Then all of a sudden, just 48 hours before she was to do that, Sally Laid and Marion's daughter was told this is going on hold pending further investigations. Marion Barter's daughter, Sally Layden, has been waiting 24 years for answers. If a few more months can help, she's not going to argue. Well, if they feel that they have more things to investigate, obviously that is something that I want um, to happen. And you've had eyes on this case for quite a few years now, as you said. Do you think we'll ever know what happened to her? Well, there is every chance that that can be solved. Absolutely. All of these people who are working towards that goal, they have found some incredible things and who knows what they might find next. They want anyone with information about Rick Bloom who uses all of these aliases, Frederick de Hedeveri, Willie Wooters, there are so many. They want anyone who knows him to come forward because they do believe that there are perhaps a lot of people out there who do have information that might not know about this story yet or that might have been reluctant to come forward. We just don't know how deep and how dark this story goes yet. I've been covering the disappearance of people pretty much my whole career, going back more than 25 years now, and it has changed so much over that time. Back then you would write a story, it would go in the paper, you would get some reaction, but now these stories have been covered in incredible detail and people now can get involved and lend their skills. They don't have to be trained investigators. There are some people with amazing research skills out there who are discovering remarkable things. And I think that these true crime podcasts are bringing out witnesses, but they're also bringing out these talented amateur investigators who I think can actually help solve some of these cold cases and uh, I guess bring some sort of resolution to the families who are just desperate for answers like Sally about her mum Marion. David Murray is the Australian's national crime correspondent. You can read all the nation's best news, sport, politics and business anytime at theaustralian.com.au. 